In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of advanced techniques you can do with lists in InDesign. Most importantly, we need to learn how to work with multi-level numbered lists. This would be useful for catalogs, instructional or legal documents, where you need to have several levels of numbering. If you want to check out the example that I prepared, just open up the multi-level list in design document and there you will find this first page which demonstrates how this can work but the key is really about setting up the paragraph styles. So you will notice that I have a group here called multi-level list and I have level 1, 2, 3 and 4 paragraph style set up. There is a very important thing that connects them together and that is a list name. So if I double click on one of these and I go inside bullets and numbering, you will find this option here called list. Now this is a name I gave this group. So I called it multi-level list, but you can call it anything else. But once you create a list name, that will be able to connect your levels together. And it will also allow you to continue numbering between frames within the same document or even within multiple documents in a book file. For now, let's just concentrate on how to set this up. But I'm going to create a new document just so you can see how it starts from scratch. So I will choose File New Document and I will just create a standard simple document. And I will use the Type tool, create a text frame and I'm just going to type in Chapter 1, let's just say. Now, if I choose this to be a numbered list, that already works. And if I press enter and I type in chapter two, that already counts them. Now, what happens if I create another text frame and they are not even connected to each other? And I ch type in chapter three here and I choose numbered list again. Now, the problem is that every time I choose a numbered list, it's not going to remember my previous items in that list because there's no connection between them. So what if I save this as a paragraph style? So I come to the paragraph styles panel and choose new paragraph style. And I can check that this recorded that this is a numbered list. So at the moment, these are all the standard settings, nothing else. I'm just going to call this one chapter titles and press OK. So now that is used on this line. I will select the second line and also apply it. And immediately that happened. There is also something that went wrong. The numbering is actually now one on both of them. So there is no sequence. It just keeps it at one. And let's just try this. If I press enter and type in chapter three here, it's the same thing. So what's wrong? Well, when you save a paragraph style for a numbered list, there is one simple thing that you need to make sure you adjust and that is within the settings. So if we go back under bullets and numbering, you will notice that by default, when you save a numbered list as a paragraph style, the mode is set to start at. And if it's set to start at number one, that means that every entry will be at number one. So there's no sequence, there's no automatic advancement. So if we want to change that, we just simply have to choose continue from previous number. Once I do that, immediately these will be numbered correctly. So if I now click OK, that seems fine. But what happens if I apply the same paragraph style here on this chapter, which I'm going to now call chapter four. So at the moment, you can see the sequence numbers are good here. And then if I have this line selected and I choose the same paragraph style that we define in the first frame, let's see what happens. So I checked it now, but the sequence number is still at number one. And the reason for that is because even though we have a paragraph style created, it can only work within the same frame or if it's a connected story. But these two are completely independent from each other. So just to show you that if I delete this one here and I connect these two frames by using the output and then click on this other frame. And then if I type in, let's just say chapter four, if I make this frame smaller, and that goes on to the other frame because there is a thread between these two, which once again, we can turn on just to see it. So because there is a thread and it's a story that's connected together, it's going to work. But once these two are independent frames, it's not going to work. So if I want to get rid of the chain, I can just click twice on the input part of this second frame and that will disconnect the two. So now this is an independent frame 
and even though I have the chapter titles paragraph style selected and being used, it's not going to register that there has been already four numbers in this sequence. So what we need to do is again another change in the paragraph style options. So I go back and edit that. Under bullets and numbering, we have this feature, which I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the new list option, and that is the key. So if I choose that and I give this a name, let's just call this chapters and then click OK, then immediately all of these will be connected throughout the whole document. So anytime this paragraph style is used, it's going to remember how many of them were present in previous pages. So if I click OK, let's see another interesting thing. If I change the order of these frames and I drag this frame onto the left and this one onto the right, does that make any difference? It doesn't. So as long as they are on the same page, there's no change in the numbering. But if I create a new page, and I'm just going to zoom out so you can see both pages. So when I have a new page and I drag this frame onto the next page, immediately the numbers will update. And then obviously, whichever page is closer to the beginning of the document is going to update the numbering to be lower than the frames coming later. So just keep that in mind because that's just the way the numbering will work. And that's how InDesign keeps track of everything throughout the document. Because once again, remember, once you create a list and you name your list, it's going to keep track wherever this paragraph style is used, even though they are not connected stories, they will still be counted. So once I move it back to the first page, immediately it recognizes what was the original order, but only if they are on the same page. But that's not the only thing I wanted to show you. So this is obviously the key and very important to be able to set up your multi-level lists. But a multi-level list is more than just simply using a list name. Because once you want to have another level, let's say level two, which would be a section or a heading maybe under this, you would need to use a second paragraph style for that. But you want to make sure that it is also within the same list name. So let's see how I do that. I'm going to press enter here and I'm just going to type in heading one. Now I will save this as a new style. So I go to the styles, new paragraph style, and I am going to call it heading titles. And then I go to the bullets and numbering option and this is the key. So this is where we need to make sure that it is registered correctly. So most importantly, it is in the same list name. So it's under the chapters. And then I'm going to increase level to number two. And that way immediately, as you can see, that the numbering starts at number one instead of number two because this is a sub entry within our list and it doesn't affect the main level, level one, which are the chapters. And I probably should have called my list name something else, but for now, let's just keep it like that. And I hope it's not too confusing, although this topic is quite confusing even for me sometimes. But most importantly, how can we make sure that the numbering looks different so that we separate level one and level two from each other a bit more. Well, first of all, we could change the format maybe to letters or characters like A, B, C, D. But if we want to stick to numbers, what we can do is to indicate that this is a sub level. So the way you do that is by changing this code here. So under the number definition, the caret hashtag is the current levels placeholder. So whatever is the current level, that's what's going to be written here. Then the full stop is just simply a full stop. And then caret T is the space, which is the tab. But if I want to add the placeholder at the beginning for level one, I can just go to the drop down and choose insert number placeholder level one. Because currently there's two levels, we can insert level one into this entry. So if I choose that, you will see it's going to say one, one. But of course, let's just divide this and maybe add another dot or full stop there. So I just simply press full stop here in the uh, formatting. And as soon as I click somewhere else, that's going to show up as well there. So it's 1.1 now. If I click OK, that should work fine. So if I now press enter, you will see it will be 1.2. So we can call that heading two. 
Then if I go here and I type in heading three, at the moment it is not automatically switching between the paragraph styles, so I need to manually switch between them, but the key is here, it will automatically notice once I choose my second level style, it will automatically have number 2.1. So it knows that we already reached in level one, the second number. And within that, this is the first instance of level two. So let's just keep adding another one so you can see it. That would be heading four, then heading five, and so on and so forth. So you can see it's 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. And if I go maybe to chapter five and press enter and then choose heading titles and type in again heading six, you can tell that is now 5.1. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. And of course you can connect your paragraph styles. So each of these levels can be connected by using the next styles feature. So if I go back to chapter titles, the first level, and I just double check that, yeah, this is the level number one. So if I then choose next style, heading titles, it will automatically switch between the two. So from level one, when I press enter, the next entry will automatically be a heading entry. So this is the auto advancement between connected styles and you can see how all these features come together and everything just gets more complicated but also more automated at the same time as long as you know what you're doing. So if I click OK I am going to now press enter here and just choose chapter titles and I type in chapter 6 then press enter, look at the paragraph size panel, immediately you can see it already advanced automatically to the heading titles, so I can type in heading 7 and so on and so forth. Now of course you would want to visually separate your levels as well, it's not enough to set them up and make them work, but you also have to visually give a clue what is more important and what is a sub level. So what I would do is the chapter titles, first of all, I would edit and I'm going to already put here level one. So I like to keep it visible in the names as well of my styles, which level they are on. Sometimes I would just put an abbreviation LV1 and then I would make sure that this is more prominent. So I'm just going to stick to using Arial and then maybe bold. And because my second style that I created is based on the first one, that automatically changes, which is brilliant, because now only thing I need to do is to select heading titles, change it also in the name, so it corresponds to the naming that we started. So this is level two. And what I'm going to overwrite here is that the style will be smaller and also maybe instead of bold, this will be regular. So if I feel like that's still not big difference enough, I can always reduce the size or I can go into the bullets and numbering options and I can start changing things like the indents. So if I wanted to, I can use the left indent and just increase that up to the point that I need. And that way it's even more visually distinguished. If I want the numbers to be further away, I mean closer to the left side, I can also increase the first line indent or actually, sorry, decrease it. So if that's set to minus 11, and the left indent to 11, for example, then you will have exactly that much space between the actual entry name and the entry number. Now, if you want to change the way your sequence numbers look, you could even use character styles for that, and that's something you can define here. So let's say I wanted to make the characters in a different color without the entry being colorized. I could do that with this character style. So I'm just going to call it blue or cyan and then I just go into character color and choose cyan. So once I click OK, 
that will colorize only the sequence numbers for our second level. Remember, character styles are used for more targeting smaller elements within paragraph styles most of the time. We normally call this nesting. So if I now click OK, and then adding more items, let's say I add another one here now, I'm just going to add in heading eight, you see it works fine. And then if I want to switch to the level number one, I still have to click on it. So I can now type in chapter seven, but then when I press enter, the next line will automatically be heading again, and all the styling that we defined within the paragraph styles and using that additional character style will be also automatically used. So I understand if you feel like it's a little bit overwhelming. So what I would like you to do is to practice setting this up and try to recreate this example that I have in the document included in the exercise files. So this one is again a multi-level list having four levels. So the first level is the section, then chapter, then heading and then subheading. And you can have a look at this and how it's set up and you can check under bullets and numbering the codes that I used and also the positioning and styling options that I applied. You don't have to recreate exactly the same styling, but make sure that you can build a multi-level list including at least three individual levels and make sure also you connect them into a chain so level two for example should lead on to level three and then level one to number two and so on and so forth so just to show you as a final example here in this document if you start typing having the multi-level list number one selected you can type in let's say section then if i type chapter then if i type heading and then subheading this is all automated and because there's no next level, the next line will again be subheading until I actually manually choose level one again, which is again going to be the section like that. So believe me, this is a very important lesson to learn. Even if you find it confusing and more complex, it's still worth spending time on understanding it. Because if you ever have to work on documents where this is an important part of structuring your copy, then you will really struggle without understanding how to set up your paragraph styles. And this is definitely something you don't want to fake and manually start typing in the numbers because very quickly it can become a big mess. So you definitely want these things to be automated to avoid mistakes that you, the designer, will be blamed for. So this is not a threat, more of a warning, but honestly, I know that sometimes it's hard to learn new techniques and you might not see why it's necessary, but by understanding something more complex like this, you will be able to create paragraph styles much faster and easier for less complicated projects. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.